I spent some time with, with uh, the chairman of the board. And <laughs> thank God he liked me. <laughs> Don Rickles said to him, Frank, you look a little down. Hit somebody, you'll feel better. <laughs> but uh, Sinatra was a great hero, a great hero of mine. And uh, I, in 85, I was fronting the Desert Princess, Pacific Princess, Desert Princess. And because I played a lot of tennis in, in Palm Springs, they made me the, the, the spokesperson of the, of the hotel. So um, there I was with the pictures of me with the tennis racket, my wonderful hairpiece. Hi. Um, so Barbara Sinatra calls me one day at the hotel. <clears throat> she said, Bernie, I represent the uh, Coachella Valley uh, uh, Foundation for the Abused Children of the Coachella Valley. We'd like to do a telethon at your hotel, my hotel. <laughs> I said, well, that's great with me. And, and she said, I'll tell you who'll be there. And Frank will be there. <laughs> And Sammy will be there, and Bob Hope will be there. I said to myself, "Woo! I don't know if I could handle this." So we, I, I had a, a Thanksgiving uh, uh, tennis tennis event, and um, somebody there was a rumor started that Frank Sinatra was going to be here. Frank Sinatra was going to be there. Uh, th this was before the te the telethon, and I said, "Oh, gee, I better." And I remember a Merv Griffin uh, thing. He made, he made a joke about Sinatra. I said, I'll do that joke. I'll do that joke. OK, so I said, Friend, Sinatra is there. I see him sitting in the back looking kind of judgmental. And I said, oh, gee. So I, I said, why is Frank Sinatra always in the company of kings and uh, princes and heads of state and premiers? Because even those people need someone to look up to. Got a tremendous laugh. And I said, Mr. Sinatra, would you please stand up? And I saw his face smiling. He likes me. I'm saved. So uh, that began my, re my relationship with, with Frank Sinatra. I'm playing tennis with Giovanni Brasher one day at Dick Van Patten's court. And uh, Giovanni, he had a dance act, uh, Brasher and Tybee. They had a dance act, and they opened it one time for big stars like Maurice Chevalier. He says, ah, Maurice Chevalier was, was a stick in the mud. He never wanted to want socialize or anything. He says, but Sinatra, Sinatra was just so great to work with, to work for. One day we got this job in, in some place in Texas. It was, it was, and uh, Sinatra sticks his head into, the, into our dressing room. And he said, hey, kids, you want to go to the fights? Yeah, we'll go with you, Frank. It'll be great. So they're in a limo, and they're driving 90 miles an hour through these roads in Texas. Ooh, a cop pulls him over. He doesn't know who's in the car. And he starts to write out a ticket. So Frank rolls down the window, and he says to the cop, Hey, punk, get the fuck away from this car. And the cop realizes who it is. And he said, oh, sir, I beg your pardon. I, ho I hope I haven't disturbed you in any way. Excuse me, please. You have a w See, you have a wonderful evening. And Giovanni said, you know why Sinatra could do that? Because he had the government on one side, and he had the organization on the other side. So whenever you get stopped by a cop, pull that. <laughs> hey, fuck, get the fuck away from his car. 